I'm going to be working on this part of this today. i got to seal this up. Uh, it's going to take a lot. After it dried, it actually shrunk a little bit. I was surprised it shrunk at all. Uh, and it's still a little soft down in the very bottom of this. So I need to burn it a little bit. But I think that the top, this last two inches, got very dry from me using my heater on it. So that's good. The top is very dry, but the inner core is not as dry. But I definitely need to fill this top part in with something. So I'm going to try and do the concrete and see how much of it I have and see if I can get that level across the top of there. And then I'm not going to do the inner liner yet because it still feels moist on the inside. Or, uh, it has that uh, silica gel and I think I need to burn it with a low fire before I can seal it all the way. Otherwise I feel like I'll end up sealing that moisture inside there. So if that's what I'm going to do for now, I'm going to try and just seal the top of this, get this sealed up. Definitely crispy dry out here, but not so much down in there yet. And I don't think it'll hurt if I have to fill this in. So that's where I'm going next. So again, we're using high temp stove and furnace cement. Gray if that matters. Uh, resistant temperature up to 1482 Celsius, 2700 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to open these up, and as I mentioned before, these are quite old. This one's really light. This one's pretty heavy. And that one's about the same. So I'm guessing this one is a brick. And these two still have some moisture in them. We're about to find out what we have inside here. Mm. Pretty hard, at least on the top here. get past the top it may not be so hard. I may have to go out and buy some new stuff here. Well, that's pretty pliable. And that's all you want. You don't want too much water in this stuff. So I've been doing a little bit of smoothing. I get my knife just a little wet here. Not too wet, because I don't want too much moisture in here. Although I'm going to let it dry. And I just run this around here. Be careful I don't get too much of a slant to the thing. I, wanna, I have to add some more to the inner side here, obviously, because it's too slanted on the inside. So that's as far as I've gotten with that first tub. And I'm going to open the second tub and see where I get with that now. So this one looks like it's going to be nice and soft the whole way through. That's perfect. We may even build the base down there. We'll see if it's dry enough. If not, we'll seal this up and save it for later. Oh yeah, this is perfect. This whole thing's going to be nice and moist. That's perfect. I should have more than enough then. Alright, I'll take this all packed in here. I'll bring it back. Alright, there's the final for tonight. Um, we shall see how it dries up. Let me get out of the light a little bit for you guys. We'll see how it dries up. Uh, my inner circle is not perfect, but I still have to line that inside. And I'm going to have to flip it into this stuff, so I'm hoping that uh, I don't have a seal problem right here at the top where they come together. Uh, if I do, I guess I'll grind out the seal and fill that in. So, but like I said, this is still a little moist down in here. Hopefully that moisture doesn't try and rise straight up. But I think when I burn that inside there, it'll probably just evaporate out somewhere. So we're going to uh, close up for the night. Uh, I'm not going to start doing the inside until I get a little bit of a fire going in there. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that just yet. But I think what I may do is I may use the hole in the center down there. If you guys can see that on the camera here. And just stick some kind of a torch through there and turn it on its side. Uh, and rest it on something and blow a torch inside there. 
Alright, I took my center uh, canister out of the lid and the uh, perlite refractory mix that I made, or whatever you want to call it, started to crumble pretty bad there when I took that out of there. It was stuck to it pretty bad. So, <clears throat> let me get a light on here. So, I'm kind of going to have to do a little repair work on that as well. You can see that really crumbled. Uh, and it was still pretty soft inside there. I took a torch to it, and you can see that uh, it actually, uh, can you see that or not? It actually started to melt the perlite. So that makes me a little curious as to if it actually was melting the perlite or if it was melting the sodium silicate and how this will handle extreme temperature. I held it on there for a long time though. I mean, it was a good five minutes just to see what it would do. So anyways, that's the lid at the state that uh, I pulled the part out and I was at the patch. I'm probably just going to use the uh, concrete or the cement, high temperature cement to fill it all in instead of putting more perlite in there. It doesn't serve any purpose there since I'm going to have to line it with the cement anyway. That's where we ended up with on our cement. I did take a torch and put it in the uh, side here. Uh, side hole, which I can't find, it's over here. I put it in there and hit this. And this side over here now is pretty dry. However, this side, the opposite side where the torch was pointing in from, is not so dry. So I'll probably hit that a little more tomorrow. Um, I want to get outside and do it. But it did put off a little bit of fumes the first time it was drying. So when I was heating that up for a long period of time, it started to get a little fumey in the basement. So I think the first time I burn this, I should definitely do it outside here. <laughs> not in the house. Keep up my whole basement. That's probably not good for me. But this is drying up, you know, a little bit. Slow, I imagine. It'll probably take a while to dry all that out. So I don't want to get that too hot while it's drying. And then we'll go ahead and line this and line the base. And I think that after that, we'll be ready for our burn. Uh, obviously, line the whole top of this. Still have to build the burner. So I'm working on that. I've got a few little pieces. And that's where we stand right now. We will uh, update as we do our next part. Sorry this is taking so many videos, but I'm kind of having fun doing it, so I'm just uh, sharing with you guys. Our final goal, and a couple of people have asked this, is uh, not so much to make a foundry as it is to take a project from start to finish. And let me grab what we're making here. I, a few videos back, I talked about making a stove out of... Uh, that's all my pieces, I think, isn't it? Yeah. I talked about making this stove, this uh, flower pot stove, and those are the two pieces that I cut out on my CNC. That's just uh, foam, pieces of foam that I cut out, you know, your standard foam. And I'm going to use the wire wire cutter to cut them out of there uh, to get them all cut down to just the right size, which still needs a little work. I'll get there. I figured I'd put that on hold until I got my foundry built anyway. And I still have this pattern if I need to cut some more. Uh, if I don't like the first one, then the pattern's already in my computer and I can just push through to get another one. So this whole project is a start to finish. Build the foundry. Build the foam cutter. <laughs> use my CNC router with some foam. Pour some aluminum. And make an alcohol stove. I know. Most work anybody's ever put into one alcohol stove. But we're going to take it the whole way through. Uh, and when it's all done, we'll take the sucker camping somewhere. And uh, it'll probably be the most fun I've ever had on a camping trip with an alcohol stove. So that's, where we, <laughs> that's what our final goal is. We'll let you guys go. Talk to you later.